Have you guys ever been so down bad after losing a ranked game that you decide to climb up a mountain just to take all your frustrations out on a tree? No. Yeah, me too, man. So unlike you and I, this menace is about to do the unthinkable after getting destroyed in his placement matches, to be decides to clap a tree to avenge his pride. However, the crazy thing is, our boy Lee Sien actually ends up finding a tree looking like Shakira, as its hips ain't lying. And just like we all expected, our boy whips out some foam to slip inside the tree, since it would be too dangerous to get any splinters on something as big as a person's battering ram. What's even crazier is the fact that the tree's opening coincides with what looks like the real deal, as if this entire thing is either alive, or a perfect tree sculpted by a master artist on Pinterest. Regardless, right before Lee decides to get the super sussy show on the road, he realizes it's hard to get the banana plantation up and running when it's super cold on top of a mountain. So he decides to pop in some AirPods to listen in on westernized pieces of sussy culture. So now with him listening to a white woman and a black man doing some rice cake destroying, he decides to cosplay old man Skrillex as he starts going bang a rang. After the beat drops, our boy goes even crazier than normal as he begins using his hands to channel his inner tens, allowing him to jet dash forward past the point of no return as his dash is stuck on cooldown. Moments later, he takes a page out of Sword Art Online as Lee starts dreaming of using augmented reality to destroy even more trees without him leaving his house so it's super clear our boy has nothing wrong with him at all. He just happens to be a Chad gamer in love with Roblox, Minecraft, and Valorant so he just needs a moment to relax from time to time whenever he gets pummeled by those younger and better looking than him as nothing else beats seeding up a tree. After finishing his epic roleplay event from Goldshire and World of Warcraft, it dawned on Lee that he actually went through and let his intrusive thoughts win, as what kind of person would go toe to toe with a tree even if it looks like a person. But at least our boy is a nice guy as he cleans up after himself, but after taking a look at his fill-up bag, it looks like our boy has finally released all of his pent-up anger from his red carpet of losses in his match history. Nonetheless, as Lee leaves to go home to go back to his Radiant and Challenger grind, the tree begins to look like it's seeping some water from the very place Lee attacked with all his might. Shortly after, the tree began squirming, fully armed with pink hearts all around it. So maybe this is all just a sussy dream. Unfortunately, it wasn't, so upon arriving back home, Lee found a midget looking like some kind of elf from another world screaming and yelling at him for no reason. The midget girl then started to command our boy to take responsibility, but she's just met with a confused and profound face from Lee, as our boy is starting to think he exploded too hard, causing him to lose track of reality. Eventually, Lee found out that the elf wasn't wasting time screwing around as she ended up removing his entire room and placed a bottomless pit for him to step into if he decided to not cooperate. Our boy then learns from the elf-like being that he violated the number one rule in all of anime, and to never ring a ding a tree like a psychopath, since it could be someone's mom from another world. Now that Lee has discovered the tree he specifically chose tonight was somehow someone's mom, he starts yelling and hitting himself as he can't believe this is happening to him right now. Suddenly, the girl smirks causing a bright purple flash to fully engulf our boy, so Lee loses track of his movement as everything around him begins to turn faster than his pronouns. Shortly after the world stopped spinning around, he started losing consciousness as he watched himself fall into some kind of world. Upon waking up in another world dimension, he is greeted by a game-like system congratulating him for becoming the first ever husband candidate of the stupid single tree. After making sure he isn't dreaming, he realizes he screwed up as he doesn't want to be covered by King Anime Recaps as the one boy who destroyed a tree, causing him to be reincarnated in another world. It's then revealed that there's multiple world trees around the universe and their sole purpose is to protect and nurture the planet using their roots. Unfortunately for Lee, he ended up making contact with a young world tree wanting to make Earth its home, since Earth did not have a world tree to protect and nurture it. So the problem here is that our boy smashed the only tree willing to make Earth its home, so yeah, our boy screwed up bad. After pausing a moment to take all the information in, our boy starts maniacally laughing as he starts to think he can finally be the main character in his life, and it's all thanks to a random tree he found on a mountain. But then, out of nowhere, he slaps himself to stop laughing. So now being scared that our boy is exhibiting some extra hidden different personalities exactly like in the movie Split. Regardless, he starts yelling at himself wondering how he could laugh at such a dire time like this, as he needs to get out ASAP due to his clan on Clash of Clans needing him to 3-star the last base. As he weeps knowing that his clan will kick him out after missing his war attacks, a notification interrupts his sadness claiming that the World Tree of Purity is super shy. After a while, he gets super agitated that a notification keeps popping up as the World Tree of Purity is using the game system to talk to him like some kind of AI. 
Eventually, he hits enough of the world tree communicating with him, so he starts attacking the system notifications to the best of his abilities, whilst commanding her to bring him back to his original world. Unfortunately for Lee, the world tree claps back by refusing to send him back to Earth. Instead, she gives him a quest to make sure he's worthy of being a husband candidate. And if he fails to complete it, she warns him the penalty will be death. Upon hearing her last words, our boy decides to play ball like a true wimp. So he decides to ask what exactly must he do to complete his quest. And within a blink of an eye, Lee finds himself washing ashore an island with a humongous sand castle before him, mysteriously named the Academy. His task is now to go inside and graduate within 120 days or else he will be fed to the neighboring tribal chieftain and turned into a very mystical and yummy soup. But if our boy is actually able to complete the mission, he will gain the quest reward of the World Tree's sussy love, while also having the added benefit of being able to live on. However, we discover he wasn't actually teleported to a deserted island, but it was actually just Lee dreaming about what's about to happen to him if he fails the mission. So he snaps back to reality and begins researching the new world he's in. He then finds out that the brand new world he got teleported to is basically Earth combined with some fantasy game elements, so there's a bunch of dungeons and everyone literally looks human. Nevertheless, the world tree interrupts him again and forces him to create his character in the brand new world, as all these stats will reflect what he looks like on the planet. As such, our boy gets super excited at the thought of allocating all his skill points, since on Earth, all he did was game and nothing else, so at least he has some gaming expertise to help guide him through. But then it turns out he must be an iron player, as Bro decides to sacrifice all of his charm points so he could put more points into luck, causing the world tree to start weeping and shaking her head furiously. Against the world tree's wishes, Lee confirms his new abilities by punching the confirmation button, causing a blinding light to shine through the sky and straight into his body. He then starts getting infused with an otherworldly power, as lightning begins to surge through his entire body and out into the surroundings. After being infused with lightning and the traces finally going away, he begins feeling exhausted as he starts panting like he's totally out breath, while also feeling super heavy exactly like if he transformed into Nico Avocado. Nonetheless, he turns back towards the world tree only to find her absolutely sobbing about his new look, as Lee hasn't yet realized everyone else on the planet is only able to see his super ugly and overweight brand new version of himself. This doesn't bother our Chad though, so he tells the world tree not to worry, as he can just work out every day starting from tomorrow to lose all the weight he's apparently gained, as he has 120 days before the husbando exams. However, on his 13th day of constantly working out in the brand new world he lives in, he starts breaking down as he's making no progress losing some fat, so he's basically like the artist being too lazy to draw an overweight version of himself. But he knows he can't give up now as he wants to go back to the real world to watch his beloved Lakers win the championship again, so he's able to hype himself back up. As he continues his jog through a nearby university, he passes by two girls whom he overhears making fun of his appearance, claiming that he's even uglier than the troll ogre from Dark and Darker. As such, Lee gets riled so much that he actually turns into an ugly monkey instead. This causes him to finally lash out and start yelling at the girls, and he even goes as far as to chase them down as we find out our boy has some anger management issues. But then, as he chases after the girls that were busy making fun of him earlier, all of his commotion and loudness alert a nearby goddess busy quenching their thirst with some Mountain Dew. Then turns out that the girl is not only beautiful, but she got some massive pyramids of Giza, and she even managed to stick an entire oven below the ship's deck that could rival Nicki Minaj. Unluckily for our boy though, she stops to look only for her to start profusely sweating at the sight of seeing the ugliest man alive. Meanwhile, back to the action, our boy is too slow and he doesn't have enough stamina to continue chasing, so he ends up picking up a rock like a true monkey threatening them that they should make fun of ugly people, as there's nothing wrong with having low charm. Luckily, a security officer is able to apprehend our boy before he got even more rowdy, so she tells him that being loud in public spaces is strictly prohibited. As such, she warns Lee that this is the last warning she will ever give him again, so we discover that he's actually been caught doing the same thing at least six times in the past week. And so our boy apologizes and promises to never step foot on the park again, but the lady lets him go as she feels some pity for Lee as life handed him a straight 0 out 10 on the attractiveness scale. But as soon as he leaves the premises of the park, some girl walks by him and starts insulting him by calling him a dinosaur, so our boy has to try his hardest to calm down. Regardless, he decides it's time to finally amp up his workouts as he can't even call it working out if all he does is jog around without lifting any weights. But then, just as he finishes signing up, he gets instantly rejected as the guy refuses him membership for being so unattractive that Lee has already broken the rule of never ever being disgusting or disrespectful towards other gym members. Our boy then attempts to plead for his case, telling the man he's not violating anything as he's not that ugly, 
but the guy claps back by handing him a mirror. Upon looking into the mirror, he transforms into Snow White, so the mirror actually instantly breaks just at the sheer sight of Lee's face, even though he can't actually see what he looks like as he can only see his previous self. Nonetheless, he heads back home only to find himself being followed by numerous TV stations, as he becomes the hot topic of the planet for being the man who broke a mirror with his face. He's so ugly now, even though the artist is too lazy to show his transformation, that Breaking News decided to cover how he's the first man ever to break a mirror with his reflection. Nevertheless, he's forced to head back home feeling absolutely defeated that he can't even join a gym to pump some iron, as he knows he only has one month left before he has to pass the exam to make sure he's worthy of the world tree. However, the next day, he picks himself back up as this hardcore gamer knows that he just gotta have the Sigma grind set to make sure he can come out of this universe alive. Now fast forward to a month later, our boy has actually completed the impossible, as he's evolved from Nico Avocado's weight bracket and joined Chris from Mr. Beast, as he successfully ends up only 99 kilograms. As such, to celebrate Lee's achievements, the World Tree helps him out as she unlocks a shop for him to use, where he can gain currency anytime he makes someone happy. But since he accidentally made the Goddess of Purity happy using his siege battering ram on Earth, he's given a boatload of money to spend. However, our boy has been playing too much gacha games like Honkai Impact, so he ends up spending it all trying to win a jackpot from a wheel. Luckily for him, he actually ends up winning something useful as he gains a mask looking like Metapod that allows him to gain an extra 2 points in attractiveness, and the longer he wears the mask, the more he becomes a Reese God Master 9000. After spending all of his points and only winning the mask with a million water bottles, Lee shows us what's it like to have an IQ level lower than room temperature. Nonetheless, he decides to celebrate his weight loss by heading to a nearby mall with his mask equipped, hoping to buy some fresh new clothes. Unfortunately, he realizes everything is expensive AF since he pretty much blew through his initial starting cash given to him for being a new character. As Lee continues to contemplate on whether or not he should just use up the rest of his cash on some fire Roblox skins, he ends up overhearing that a famous tree from the Holy Family has showed up inside the mall. And so our boy decides to check out all the commotions surrounding the Holy Tree, since he's bored of the World Tree not showing her true identity to him. Shortly after getting into position, Lee becomes mesmerized at the sight of the Holy Tree, since she really do be having some honkais on her. With all eyes glued on her, she starts twirling around like a Beyblade as she knows her rice cakes keep bouncing around like it's hot off the oven. Suddenly, as our boy continues staring as he blends into the crowd, the Holy Tree actually makes eye contact with him and holds it for more than a second. Using just a single two-second stare, our boy loses his battle in the month of November, as he accidentally explodes with his chug-chug machine in full overdrive. He then falls down on his knees as his legs couldn't handle his own earthquake shaking him to his core, but our boy does not realize Miss Holy Tree has slowly made it in front of him. She then surprisingly calls him out in front of everyone, but then she tells Lee how she knows our boy has something good good hiding somewhere beneath, so she starts showing off her tree bark in public. And you can say this tree really is something else man, since it's way better than the ones on Earth. Anyways, back to the action, our boy finds himself sitting down on the top floor of the Holy Tree headquarters, utterly confused to how he got here or why he's even here in the first place. Then, with just a blink of the eye, the Holy Tree appears in front of him as if she activated her teleportation devil fruit. Regardless, as she continues staring at Lee without saying anything, she ends up procuring a smile right before she starts activating her sussy nation attacks. As such, she gets up and slams her desk, whilst our boy is busy sussy day dreaming of things that could happen in this very scenario he's currently in. Mere seconds later, the Holy Tree closes the gap between it and Lee using her sussy jutsu powers, leaving our boy in total shock as he can't believe what the heck is happening right now. Lee then starts to look for his asthma inhaler. As he's unable to handle the intense scenario he faces due to the Holy Tree pulling some very unholy actions as she parted his red sea of pants without any hesitation. She then starts laughing like a true crazy maniac featured on a Netflix show, as she starts asking our boy why his banana tree plantation outgrew its plot size all of a sudden. Shortly after exposing Lee for his surprising actions, the Holy Tree channels even more of its unholy powers causing our boy to repeatedly say he's sorry as his banana tree plantation cannot be controlled once it goes crazy. Upon hearing his excuse, the Holy Tree continues its attack straight onto the defensive side of Lee's court, as he allows her to easily get to his basket. Now that she's right underneath the net, the tree asks our boy why he's being so shy, as it looks like she's ready to jump really high to dunk her basketball straight in like prime Dwight Howard. But Lee still does nothing as he's still purely stunlocked by the attacks of the holy tree, but let's be real, he's totally enjoying the fact that he doesn't have to do anything this time for the tree to continue on charging. 
Eventually, she stops cosplaying Chef Curry in his prime as she doesn't want to continue draining the basketball. So she changes the subject and simply asks our boy what his name actually is, to which Lee replies by revealing his true real name. After discovering his name, the Holy Tree places its hand on his back, where she softly lets our boy know that there's a lot of unique people like him in this world. However, the Holy Tree quickly transformed into its true demon self, so Lee learns real quick that she's actually only after some of his secret Dragon Balls that he won from the gacha earlier. Our boy originally thought it was utterly useless as the fine print clearly explained only girls are allowed to use it, but now he knows he has the upper hand as the Holy Tree really desires its effects. She then orders him to swiftly give it to him, but our boy hesitates as he expected her to offer huge amounts of money first in return for such a seemingly rare item. As such, Lee refuses to hand it over, so he decides to finally wake up and stand up for himself, leading to him asking the Holy Tree why exactly are the arboreal balls so important that she actually went through all this trouble to bring him in. And so she reveals that for tree people like her, the legendary balls are a key accelerant for growth as it transforms a baby straight into its adult form. And so that's why she's trying her hardest to make sure she's the first to get to his rare item since she actually has some tree babies she needs to make sure grows to their full potential as part of the royal oak family. But then something within Lee causes him to temporarily evolve into a chad as he turns his back to her, where he realizes the tree people come from the seed of his world tree. So technically, if he ends up marrying the world tree of purity then he knows he could rice cake smash all the other trees, whilst they name him as the ultimate daddy of them all. Nevertheless, he gets brought back to reality as he starts sweating profusely at the thought of him actually pulling off such a Sigma male move, as it requires him to actually stand up for himself against a royal family. However, as he struggles on deciding what course of action should he choose, the Holy Tree interrupts him by making a snarky remark to make sure he thinks properly about it. As such, our boy decides it's time for him to no longer be a pushover like his past life on Earth, as he now has the perfect opportunity to turn his life around and change into Faker best pro gamer of all time. And just like his idol, he places the red buff perfectly on the table using his amazing mechanical skills, enticing the holy tree to come forward to claim her prize. However, he baits her last second by taking back the red buff before she could reach it, ordering her to wait. Our boy then activates his voice changer to make his voice deeper, claiming that he actually has two more at home and he's planning to reclaim all seven dragon balls to summon forth the eternal dragon. However, the holy tree calls him stupid, telling him that he shouldn't have revealed he has two more, since she's going to steal them all away from him like a true savage. She then continues to make fun of him for revealing way too much information as Lee could have just gotten away with only losing one arboreal ball. Regardless, her constant insults forces our boy to be so frustrated to the point where he could actually feel his face burning up from anger building up within him. Eventually, his anger subsides after realizing that the World Tree has given him a new sub-quest, where Lee learns he needs to make the Holy Tree start leaking like a broken faucet ASAP, or else face imminent death. After reading the alert, our boy instantly turns white like a ghost due to its consequence of failing, causing even the Holy Tree to be worried about Lee. Nevertheless, he knows he needs to complete the mission, so the only way to go about this is to make sure he heads to the nearest bathroom, as he won't be able to last more than a second if he doesn't do a premature explosion before taking on the quest. But right before he leaves the room, his anger management disorder activates as he can no longer take all the insults he's receiving lightly. Instead of B winding it to the bathroom, he instead comes back and starts closing all the doors and locking them afterwards, as our boy has finally had enough. Now with his anger taking control, he channels his inner sussy beka as he picks up the tree and slams it on the desk beside them. He then squares up and starts taking over the walls of the holy tree through effective use of his battering ram, allowing him to start the procedure of intense rice cake baking. As he continues the legendary siege of the Holy Tree, Lee decides to take off his mask as it's getting in the way, but this helps him out as the Holy Tree can't believe how ugly he really is. And so the rest was history, as Lee successfully invades the plains of the Holy Tree, allowing Lee to absolutely take over, causing her to experience a world she's never expected. Anyways, long story short, the bike ride across the desk was so crazy that the Holy Tree's shoes came off just from a single impact of Lee's rocket, as it started continuously blasting off into space like Teen Rocket. In the end, our boy became exactly like his idol Satama, but instead of becoming the new One Punch Man, he became the most legendary One Thrust Man instead. And the reason why he became so legendary to the royal tree is because she finally found out that a banana tree plantation can continue on forwards, even if the banana has been harvested once already. 
And in the end, the absolute menace claps back when the oak tree tells him today is the best day for her tree saplings to be created with 100% effectiveness, so he ended up exploding the terminator within the tree. Now the crazy part to all of this is after our dude exploded on purpose, he withdrew his horse, and the horse was already ready for its second race. Shortly after showcasing the ability to instantly get ready for another match, Lee gets up and tells her that although he might have already forgiven her, his McDonald's feels differently as it's warring to get revenge after her initial display of aggressiveness. Regardless, with Lee's sword already unsheathed and ready to do some light sparring against a tree for match 2, our boy holds nothing back and charges forward without any hesitation as he starts screaming like King Arthur with his Excalibur. Now with round 2 of the best of 5 series in the middle of its epic battle, Lee's opponent within the noble trees end up succumbing to his relentless attacks. As such, the unholy oak tree is unable to resist the truth and lets it escape as she stops pretending our boy's anime horse is the worst she's ever seen. Instead, her role in attempting to become the best Hollywood actress in the world has come to an end, since Lee was able to see and feel what she truly had in mind, so his confidence levels begin to balloon even higher. Anyways, long story short, our boy ended up placing a saddle in front of him using a tree, and in regards to round 2, Lee was the clear winner with the score ending 69-0. Nonetheless, the whole battle of the best of 5 series has led to a savage unlock within our boy's brain. So now the only thing he can think about is how awesome doing rice cake smashing with real trees in another world really is. Whoa. And I totally forgot that his future wife was the one that made him do the subquest in conquering the oak tree, who's actually a really weird man if you think about it. Regardless, with the completion of the subquest, Lee has also gained another special Dragon Ball, plus an additional special feature from the oak tree encyclopedia, giving him a slight bonus to his wind magic capabilities. Now that our boy has completed his first ever subquest, he puts his special mask back on and then we discover he's super addicted to trees now, so he's going to try his hardest to get in the academy. It then dawns on him that if he's able to successfully pass the entrance exam, that not only will he win over the mother of all trees, but he will also get the chance to become Ash Ketchum as he wants to catch all them trees. Oh, and by the way guys, he's not that bad since he ended up sharing the extra dragon ball from his reward pile, but he kinda is since he surprisingly sticks it inside the treehouse. At least the oak tree loved the random special item entering a place the tree never expected to open up, so do what you will with that information. Nevertheless, shortly after giving away one of his rewards, he ends up leaving the entire oak tree headquarters feeling good about himself, while saying out loud that he had a tremendous and fun time even though he thought he was going to get destroyed. Instead, he came out of the headquarters feeling totally invigorated and became the man responsible for destroying trees in ways you cannot imagine. Plus, he added his first ever capture into his tree decks. So all in all, our boy had a perfect day today, so he's already ready to get home and upon arriving, he sits down and reflects about what happened. He then got scared and sat by a window overlooking his front entrance, after he realized he just messed with an entire noble tree family, but luckily, Siyang never sent anyone to destroy him. Instead, the holy oak tree came out of her office looking absolutely flustered, but she ends up telling her head of security that no issue came up even though they heard and felt the earthquake coming from the room. Instead, the only thing she did was pass over the special arboreal ball to the head of her security which she received from Lee. After handing it over to him without thinking, the man looks like he's about to gag from its disturbing smell, as Seung totally forgot how she got the dragon ball in the first place since it entered through the forbidden door. Now fast forward a couple days, Lee went back to grinding out some of skills by exercising every time he could as he knows time is fleeting and the upcoming entrance exam is closing in very soon. Even his future wife has started to get super excited with his progress to increase his charm skill, as he's slowly and surely returning back to normal with his abs even reappearing. Eventually, our boy received a notification from the World Tree of Purity alerting him that his weight level has shifted forward to obese, which doesn't even make sense as bro got some abs. Anime be anime I guess, so regardless we fast forward to the day of the legendary entrance exams that will dictate whether the menace will live on or will Lee just perish for failing the exam. After arriving at the special academy, he sits down while waiting but the dude is already shaking like mad due to nervousness as failure is not an option. With time slowly passing he gets even more nervous to the point he almost had a missing toilet problem as Lee learned the exam is actually a duel between everyone else trying to join the academy. All our boy needs to do is to just beat the person next to him, and he will be good to go in this brand new world, but after finally checking out who's beside him, he realizes his opponent is going to be a girl. Now this girl isn't just a random normie, since upon inspection, Lee discovers that the pink-haired girl is actually Azalea and she just so happens to be a successor of a very famous holy tree lineage. Nonetheless, Sussibaka Lee stops nervously shaking as he gets enamored and distracted by another tree, 
since seeing her in person causes his banana tree plantation to instantly mature due to her being so pretty. However, a boy stares at Azalea for way too long to the point where she ends up noticing, causing her to call Lee out as no popular girl wants the attention of an ugly duckling. As such, our boy responds super awkwardly as playing Valorant or League of Legends all day taught him no social interaction skills, but he's able to stutter and make an excuse about how he saw her on the news. Luckily for our boy, she falls for his lame excuse, so she stops confronting him but she goes back to staring at the wall looking absolutely bored. Eventually, she stops looking bored when an elf-like boy, named Jung Sai Wu, walks in and sits down. Azalea instantly shifts her gaze from the wall and instantly stares straight at the boy while looking like she caught the love bug. Of course, Lee feels disheartened and totally jealous that Jung didn't even have to do anything but sit down and girls started falling head over heels for him. Regardless, his jealousy gets put aside as he hears an announcer call his group so our boy swiftly changes focus as he needs to give the exam his all or he's gonna get sent to the afterlife. Shortly after entering the examination room, Lee learns that not only does he have to face off against Azalea, but he also has to deal with the Ultra Chad beside him making him look like a dwarf. Surprisingly, Jung starts playfully insulting Azalea, but he's totally serious about destroying her in the duel. Meanwhile, our boy gets flustered as he begins feeling left out of the group. However, it turns out that Jung is actually really nice as he ends up including Lee into the group conversation by asking him how his written portion went. Jung then continued on by revealing to Lee that he's also human, and since they're both humans, he wants Lee to succeed so they could get accepted together. Unfortunately for the two humans though, both of them end up getting picked first to duel each other and are quickly told to choose between a wooden sword or a wooden staff for their weapon. The two then step up to duel each other where Jung tells him to make sure he doesn't hold back, but right before he could say anything, his voice gets drowned out by Azale simping for Jung. Nonetheless, both boys end up choosing the wooden sword as their weapon, but before they could even start, our bro looks like he's kai at with his height. And within one second of the duel starting, Jung quickly closes the gap and swings his sword so hard that he ended up breaking Lee's sword with one blow. With Lee's sword now rendered useless, Jung continues forward looking like he's super hell-bent on destroying our boy. Luckily for Lee though, right before Jung was about to send him back to where he belongs, the instructor steps in and orders Lee to pick up his weapon as Jung violated the rule of using spells. Unfortunately for our boy though, Jung's tremendous display of power in just a few seconds has already gotten into Lee's head so he starts contemplating if he can even win. However, just as Lee is about to lose all hope in himself, future wifey world Tree of Purity interrupts him and cheers him on by telling him that he can totally win in style. And just like that, with the help of a chat box looking like chat GPT with emojis, our boy's confidence and hope gets restored so he readies for round 2. As soon as the instructor blows his whistle to indicate the start of the round, Lee instantly charged forward and path towards victory. Unfortunately, after blinking once he found himself instantly defeated by the elf boy, where he got left with a lot of bruises, but at least the blows he received weren't from a real sword. After losing in style and heading out of the examination room, Azalea and Jung come out to greet our boy before he leaves, so they told him to keep his head up as he did a good job. Regardless, our boy had to leave the academy feeling totally defeated and left constantly thinking about his weak goodbye, since the only thing he could think of at the time was saying you guys did good too. And since he was the first one told to go home, his one-sided defeat by Jung has left a bitter taste in his mouth. Nevertheless, after a couple hours, Lee decided to put his attractiveness plus one mask back on to figure out a way to enter the academy, as he despised others, feeling pity for him. However, the turntables turn as Lee runs into Seung the same exact holy tree he loves to continually rice cake smash, all thanks to his mystical dragon balls he won from a gacha. Sion then starts to get flustered at the sight of Lee due to him sending her to Toontown last night, but we all know she's just playing hard to get as she clearly enjoyed every sussy moment. Nonetheless, as Sion attempts to berate him for his actions the other day, our boy doesn't even budge as he realizes Sion's name tag has her title as an academy supervisor. As such, Lee decides she's going to be the key into getting back inside the academy, so he quickly activates Sussy Jutsu in a flash, quickly targeting Sion's large burrito bowl before retreating instantly, causing her to randomly make some sus sounds in front of everyone. And just like that, mission complete as he's able to flawlessly turn on her engine, allowing for her to agree to walk with him to a more secluded area. Eventually, you can tell this is about to get super oddly interesting for our boy Lee, as Sion mysteriously opens a locked door whilst already having a face you only see in very cultured anime. After opening the door, Seung leads Lee into an empty university-sized classroom, while also asking our boy what the heck he's doing here at the academy. And like a true Chad, he doesn't beat around the bush and straight up asks if Seung would love some more arboreal balls he gave her from the other day. 
But before he could offer up some more mystical balls of power, Lee ends up revealing what happened earlier with his dual test at the academy. After finishing explaining his backstory, Lee gets to the point and asks if Siang would accept his bribe of arboreal balls in exchange for her help in getting him into the academy. However, Siang hesitates for a moment and thinks about the Spanish Soccer Federation tea going on right now, where she realizes that her tree people is actually as corrupt. Mere seconds later, Siang shows off her tree assets in front of the viewer, while also flipping the bird at our boy, telling him that his offer is futile since he will most likely just fail anyways. Of course, Siang's response clearly does not resonate well with Lee as he's super desperate to get back in, causing his anger management issues to pop up for a few seconds. And with his anger now in full display, Lee decides to throw in the towel and figures he might as well bring her with him to be erased from reality by sending Siang six feet under with a single punch. Luckily, this story ain't about one punch man and the legendary Satama, so right before Lee makes contact with Siang, she ends up becoming sussy mommy by asking if she could have his fiery bat instead. Our bro's anger then subsides back to power level zero, as Lee's banana tree plantation instead decides to take over in its place. Our boy is then quick to establish the contract between the two, and let's just say he's ready to erupt the volcano to make sure a holy tree is ravaged back to its foundling roots. And so cue the sussy nation attacking, as Mr. Steel Yo Tree decides that the contract will begin right now, inside this classroom that they didn't lock. Lee then assumes the role of a teacher to use his sword made up of fresh bananas to teach Siyoung correct manners in regards to eating any fruits. This impromptu free class also taught students to make sure to gasp for some air if something is ever blocking the esophagus, and let's just say this class lasted very long. Now the only reason this class lasted longer than most is due to the fact that Lee ends up doing an anime cosplay class as well, where he decided to do the genius cosplay of being a jackhammer, while Siyoung was the concrete. In the end, the holy oak tree found itself absolutely drenched by the rain as Siang couldn't stop the storm from building up in her basement, all because of Lee. Now the funny thing is that once the two were finished with their anime cosplay class, our boy actually became even more of a menace as he ended up tying the oak tree up on the floor. Of course, she agreed to it first, but you know what Lee did afterwards, guys? He straight up ran and left Siang to figure out how to escape by herself before an entire group of math majors showed up for class. Nevertheless, a few days after doing such a class act to Siang, our boy receives a call from an unknown number, but Lee was hesitant to pick up as he doesn't want to be called another Nigerian prince. Luckily for Lee though, he answers the call last second where it's revealed that Siang has somehow successfully got our boy into the prestigious L Academy. She then continues on by notifying Lee that she's coming to make sure the agreed contract is fulfilled, as she still wants the mystical arboreal balls that he offered. After getting off the phone with Siyoung, Lee takes off his plus one attractiveness mask and celebrates by thinking that this is one step closer to making sure he can one day meet Ice Spice in the real world again. He legend also starts daydreaming about being Ash Ketchum again, as he wants to make sure he captures each and every single tree into his tree encyclopedia, as clapping trees is basically his pastime now. Also, one detail I totally forgot about is how the world tree is able to see everything he does, since it's literally her world and somehow she's totally okay with her future husband betraying her over and over again. Nonetheless, speak of the devil, our boy remembers the small cabot, where if he's able to gain admission into L Academy, then he wins a small reward where the world tree promised to give him love. But so far, she's still hiding behind her chat GPT-5 chatbox form. So she instead sends a package straight to Lee, totally not forgetting about the reward she promised. As such, Lee hurriedly opened the box that was given to him, only to disappointingly find a small tree seed within the humongous mystery box. Lee then gets super angry as he notices a pop-up appear, letting him know that the seed is somehow a result from him being sussy with the world tree, probably forgetting what he did to her in the first place to get him stuck in this world. Regardless, he ends up accepting responsibility after whining like a total beta, so Lee pulls out a flower pot out of nowhere to attempt taking care of the seed. However, right before our boy is able to place the seed in the correct hole, Siang finally arrives, so she starts banging loudly on the door, causing Lee to quickly abandon what he was doing. But since this boy is more sussy than the island boys, he totally forgets about everything upon seeing Siang, due to his bacon Big Mac slowly turning into a double bacon Big Mac with extra meat. Luckily for Siang, though, our boy doesn't transform into an anime jackhammer instantly, as Lee is able to come back to his senses after noticing that Siang actually brought some pizza with her. Unfortunately, some plot holes appear in the story as it's revealed that our boy is actually a hater of pineapple on pizza, so it's clear bro isn't cultured enough to understand how good it is. 
Thus, he starts crying and weeping like a wimp that does half reps whenever they bench or squat, complaining about how someone could ever put pineapple on pizza. Luckily, Sassy Tree Mommy orders Lee to start being a man because if he doesn't, she will take the pizza away instead and eat it all by herself. And just like that, like a true fatty unable to ever refuse food, he ends up eating the entire pizza only to thank Siam for helping him learn how good pineapple pizza really is. Now that our own Nico Avocado has joined the Pineapple on Pizza Master race gang, Lee turns his full attention back on Seon and begins blackmailing the treed for luring him into an empty lecture hall. Of course, he's just kidding, but this seems like this is all part of his sussy master plan to probably entice her into another round of rice cake smashing at his own place. Now this guy is actually a genius as he tells Seon to grab a seat while he makes some tea. But since he removed all the chairs and couches in the room, the only place left to sit is on his own bed. As the tea heats up, so does Lee's words as he begins changing his pronouns to better make fun of Sian. Getting her rice cakes absolutely destroyed the past few days. With her now totally speechless, she accidentally exposes the fact that she's actually single, and she was never engaged to someone in the first place. Now that the truth has been revealed, Lee decides it's time to learn more about oak trees today, so he whips out three arboreal balls as part of the deal he agreed to. However, our boy isn't like most anime main characters, and not because he clapped a tree, but because he knows that if a girl comes over to your place, they want more than his arboreal balls. And just as he thought, his suspicions were correct as he calls out Sion's bluff, allowing time for Lee to activate and spam his dough fruit. However, just as I thought it was time for the chapter to elevate past level 69, Sion comes alive to smack away Lee's bean burrito and warns him to make sure he doesn't miss the plane tomorrow. This catches Lee totally by surprise as his banana plantation instantly deflates as he didn't know L Academy was located in the middle of an ocean. So now insert the anime trope where the main protagonist gets stuck on a random island. But this time our hero is here to make sure he gets better inside information on multiple types of trees. You might as well call our boy a scientist since he's about to start some deep research into some trees and we all know his train will never stop. Anyways, fast forward to the part where Lee already meets his next door door neighbor, and of course it's a girl and she's probably a tree. She then happily introduces herself and gives our boy a gift, and whilst introducing herself she bows before Lee, and it's clear her armor pants had a durability of zero. Eventually, as Bro continues talking to the mysterious new neighbor, he gets stricken by an awkward feeling that reminds him of the day he first met Sion. It was at this very moment that the girl beside him named Gyusil made it clear to Lee that she's the honeysuckle tree, even though he never knew that could be such a thing. Nevertheless, as the two finish their introductions, Yusuo, who acts like the most energetic person you know, quickly closes the distance and eagerly asks if she can see Lee's face. However, Lee is swiftly able to evade her advance and declines to reveal his identity, as he knows this mask is the only thing stopping from everyone puking at seeing his true face. Anyways, after meeting Yusuo, our boy heads back into his room where we find out that Lee has brought along his seed, with the world tree to the academy. He plans to take care of the seed all the way to its growing stage, where he also decides to name the seedling Shiba. The story continues with our boy Lee coming back to his room after meeting a brand new royal tree named Gyusil, where he decides he's going to nurture a brand new tree he named Shiba. He then passes out as his first day of school is too much to handle, and what kind of nerd would study on day one anyways? And so the next day, he woke up early to farm on Roblox as he loves playing Blocks Fruits especially after maintenance, only for him to get rudely interrupted as it's time to be placed into a class. As if it was destiny, Bro finds out that he got placed into Azalea's class, so you already know Lee is scheming profusely, just so he can conquer another royal tree to put into his tree decks. Furthermore, he also finds out that there's another bombshell that has appeared into his class, so it's time for everyone to already buckle their seatbelts. Regardless, Lee is super excited to head to class, but him being a sussy backer. His own tree has already activated rock hard due to his fantasies overtaking him. But then the sussy turntables turn already, as it's revealed that his teacher for the next four years is going to be none other than Siam herself. Unfortunately for our boy though, his banana tree simmers down instantly after he realized he got ganked by his super cute yet annoying next door neighbor, Gyusil. And without class being in session for more than five minutes, Bro's head is about to explode as Guzil keeps talking non-stop like that one super extroverted friend. Suddenly, as Guzil continues yapping over and over, half her face disappears as she asks if Lee would like some of her candies. Initially, I thought it was just her flirting with him, but luckily for us, it turns out it wasn't a signal for sussy Guzil. Instead, our boy receives his second main quest within this world. Upon further instructions, his future wife informs him that he has exactly one week to make three friends at the academy, and if he fails to do so, he dies. 
And just like that, within five minutes, Bro shrunk harder than the Titanic as he can't believe his luck as it's only day two of the Academy. Elsewhere, Azalea receives an urgent message from an oracle, using her secret number, where she gets mysterious instructions to bring along Lee. She then gets up reluctantly and with fists in hand, absolutely hating the fact that Lee made it into the Academy even though he failed the dual examination with her. Nevertheless, she subtly walks by Lee to see what's going on with the loser, but she better be careful since Bro can send her to dimension number 69 in more ways than one. Anyways, Azalea watches from afar as our boy tries his hardest to make some friends, but every time he gets asked to take off his mask, everyone runs away due to his ugliness. And with everyone running away from him, his anger management issues began to show as he starts insulting everyone that rejects his friendship, so you know bro is down bad right now. Meanwhile, Yusuo sneaks up behind Azalea, looking like she's about to do more than a surprise gank. But it turns out that the honeysuckle tree is almost as big of a sussy beka like our boy Lee, since she ends up squeezing the fresh glazed Azalea buns right in front of her. After finishing her surprise attacks on Azalea's fresh glazed donuts from Krispy Kreme, Yusuo instantly asks her if she likes Lee since she's caught her staring the entire time, but of course, Azalea profusely denies it all. Instead, she starts sipping for the other human that Lee has already met, Mr. Jung, but unfortunately for her, Bro barely even notices her. Fast forward to near the end of the day, Lonely Lee begins to have a manic episode as Bro still hasn't made a friend, so he starts violently shaking harder than me when trying to pass a log on the toilet. Eventually, the world tree takes pity on our boy, so she ends up giving him a hint menu, showcasing the fact that the closest person wanting to be friends with him is Jung himself. Meanwhile, Azalea is the total opposite, as it turns out she absolutely despises him, but you guys know what they say, hate rice cake smashing is out of this world. Nonetheless, Lee gives up again due to his anger issues, so he tries to throw away a perfectly good can of juice. But just as he's about to let it rip, Joan the Chad appears out of nowhere where he smiles and asks Lee to give him the juice instead if he doesn't want it. Afterwards, Jung decides to sit down beside him as the two catch up a little bit, causing us to notice that Lee is literally as tall as Tyler 1. Jung then finally takes a sip, and within just one sip, Bro falls in love with the drink and begins thanking our boy for his amazing taste. And just like that, Lee finally got his first friend and he didn't even have to do anything. So Jung tells him that if he ever finds good food, he will come and share with him. With one down and two to go, Lee decides to go for Azalea next as she's the only one he hasn't picked a fight with yet, but it still looks like it's going to be a tough road ahead. Luckily for Lee though, as he sulks in a corner not wanting to fail the quest, Seon comes to his rescue and calls him up since teacher-student relations nowadays is on the come up. And with Seon still on the phone, Lee makes eye contact with her as she randomly ganks him from one of the classrooms, looking like she ain't up to no good. She then opens her mouth and makes the universal sussy language sign of slurpy drinking by motioning an entire bean burrito into her digestive tract, causing our boy to think it's time to whip out his battering ram. However, it turns out to be a miscommunication between the two, leading to our boy totally disappointed while Seon blushes beyond relief since she actually meant it's time to drink. Fast forward an hour later, the two end up finding themselves on a night out as Seon wants to teach an important lesson to Lee as it looks like he's having a hard time making friends. She then mentions the fact that in this world, tree people are at the top and humans are seen as trash and lower class, so Lee needs to make sure he doesn't go overboard. However, as Seon continues to teach him how the world works, Bro interrupts her by making a joke about how the squid smells exactly like her special papaya entrance. This causes her to smack the table harder than an earthbender, allowing for the editor to ask if Seon's mom was an astronaut, because her fresh buns be out of this world, no cap. Regardless, the sussy fire nation begins their attacks, Due to Seon removing her elastic band giving Lee the signal it's time to go through the red light. And right at this moment, our boy pipes up and asks her if it's time to pull out his Miley Cyrus wrecking ball out in public. But Seon starts yelling at him to calm down his courses. But since it's time for business, Lee gets up and orders Seon to follow him as he needs to relieve his sour peaches at a nearby bathroom. Of course, Seon follows like an obedient orange tabby cat, since she wants to purr louder than she ever has as it's been a while since Lee dropped the beat on her. Nevertheless, Lee picks the closest stall to the nearest exit, and upon Seung entering, he locks the door behind them and proceeds to unequip his full set of diamond armor. Afterwards, they decided to reenact the Titanic, but this time, she was the ship and bro was the iceberg as the tip was the only thing needed to sink Seung's ship. Suddenly, our boy decides to flash a thumbs up to Seung as he can't believe how much she improved in rice cake smashing all around in just a short time, so he continues to compliment her. After showering the tree with unlimited compliments, Lee decides to close the gap even more so he could bring in his attack helicopter to make sure all trees are satisfied within this compound. 
And so the rest was history once again, dutifully barging straight into the city of Siam over and over, unopposed as the gates were wide open for him to enter like a king. But then, just as I baited the editor into thinking it was all over, Lee says otherwise, so he brings the entire ordeal an entire notch up by unlocking the door. And like a true mega sussy back I never seen before, our boy continues his body bending jutsu he learned from Pervy Sage. But this time, Seung was out in the open. Now, one thing to note, I do feel bad for Seung since she's touching the ground, and we all know how bad the men bathrooms are. And let's just say bleach isn't enough to clean up. In the end, their duel was so crazy that a random magical acorn appeared as a result of Seung reaching the climax of the mountain. And if it's ever consumed, Lee's wind magic will get a huge boost. But you know what? Our boy is a total menace as bro looked at it for just one second, and then he ate it up, straight from the underground. Nevertheless, with the night ending after a nice round of perfectly friendly dueling, the two head home while Lee starts making fun of Sion for actually barking. Elsewhere, Azalea is busy shoving her face into her pillow, as the oracle repeats their orders to bring forth Lee among the admitted students. Fast forward the next morning, we get greeted by the sight of the orange-haired girl, or is it yellow, or maybe both? Let me know in the comment section below. It turns out, the girl is busy waiting for her turn as today happens to be a first ever basic training. And it's Lee's turn to spar where he ends up picking the lowest level difficulty to start. And as our boy gets ready to start, his attention quickly shifts to his left as his sussy senses are tingling after picking up the scent of a goddess in action. After taking a closer look and with Lee enamored by the new girl, he continues to stare and who could blame him as the girl got larger Honkai star rails than everyone else so far. We then learn that her name is Suyu, and her name is derived from the Japanese Cornelian cherry as she does got some of the best cherries around. Anyways, at first glance, it looks like Suyu is a master swordsman like my girl Asuna since she can easily glide through the air and destroy anything in her path with just one blow. And as Suyu destroys everything in her path without even dropping a sweat, Lee decides to ask the training bot instructor what level her difficulty is, and it turns out she's at max difficulty. Not wanting to be outdone, and more so wanting to show off, our boy decides to think with his banana tree so he tells the wooden bot to raise his difficulty to max. Coincidentally, Sue finishes right in time to watch Lee start his training, and much to my surprise, Bro didn't get knocked out within the first two seconds. She then starts blushing as she continues to watch, and much to everyone's amazement, somehow Lee has turned into a swordsman Chad, even though Bro got beat into a pulp during dual examinations. He's even able to finish the level 5 difficulty within a minute, as Lee deals a final blow causing the wooden bot to break. The bot then begins to utter the words, training over due to our boy actually dealing excessive damage to it, making it seem like it's totally broken. As such, Lee begins panicking as he didn't even know he had that much power and he doesn't want to get kicked out from the academy for breaking a training bot within the first week. However, Bro stops caring instantly once Sue ganks him from behind as she pokes him and asks what move he just pulled off that destroyed the robot. Regardless, he spills the beans and informs Sue that he was trying to copy her technique as she was moving more gracefully than his candidate goose. After letting her know that he tried to copy her, Sue straight up gives him a stone-cold face and alerts him by saying that he's doing it all wrong, so there's no way that's her moves. As such, he orders her to try again, Totally surprising Lee as he was busy recollecting what Seung said the night before, and that was to make sure he approaches tree people with utmost respect. Anyways, she ends up doing a gender reverse role swap, so she begins to teach him how it's done while she presses the gigantic Japanese blossoms straight into his back. She then continues by making sure no inches were spared between her and Lee, but it seems like something else is about to grow more than a couple inches. Nonetheless, Short King tries again and proceeds to attack another level 5 difficulty bot, and this time he easily defeats it again. Unfortunately for our boy though, Sue calls him a liar and claims that's not her swordsmanship, so she explains that his stance is exactly like her but that's the only similarity. As such, Sunu orders our boy to stop training, where she then tells him to be here at the exact same time every day, 6 times a week. Of course, Lee instantly accepts but much to everyone's surprise, he's not currently thinking of clapping the tree in front of him. But he's more excited that he might gain a new friend. The story continues with Lee not failing to disappoint being a mega sussy baka, as Bro accidentally stared too long at Sue's balloons while he accepted the kind offer. However, he gets saved by the heroic Splinter Nation as Lee finally loses the adrenaline, so he starts feeling a big splinter stuck inside one of his fingers. Surprisingly, this is his first time ever getting porcupine, even though he's been clapping every kind of tree like the biggest maniac alive, but luckily it's just on his flipping finger so Lee removes it effortlessly. But then the sussy turntables turn out of nowhere, as Sue quickly closes the gap between the finger and her esophagus, where Sue begins to help our boy out in the most totally normal way possible. 
Regardless, she walks away like nothing sussy ever happened after absolutely demolishing his lifeline through one single finger, leaving Lee totally in love as she showed off her renowned suction cup skills. Suddenly, just as Sue was about to exit the room, our boy gets confused due to Sue stopping abruptly right in front of him where she perfectly uses trigonometry to show off some rice cakes by bending down at a perfect 90 degree angle. Of course, Lee's imagination goes wild as he thinks this is a sign from Suyu, but his expectations get tempered instantly after she began directing his attention to the ground. As such, the two started to clean up the rune from debris that flew from his sword earlier, and don't worry, we aren't going lower in this scene as some of you weirdos go wild when there's no socks on. Nevertheless, as the two continue to bond a little bit for cleaning up the training area together, Sue stops randomly again and pipes up by questioning our boy as to why he keeps staring at her. Lee then tries his best to explain himself as he doesn't want to blow his chance, but the only thing he could think of is League of Legends pickup lines. Unfortunately, Bro knew that any kind of lead reference will fly straight over her head, so he decides to not make a mid laner joke to avoid being seen as a nerd, instead he deactivates his Wizard of Oz powers and claims that it's nothing. So fast forward the next day, it's revealed that it's time for the Academy to undergo the first ever hologram practice battles to assess their skills. Furthermore, Lee learns from the instructor that everyone will be evaluated thoroughly, but this time, the battles will be conducted in groups. As such, everyone quickly formed into groups of threes, but Lee failed to find a group instantly as no one wanted to carry him to Challenger. Luckily for him though, he gets saved by the bell as his first and only friend, Jung, invites Lee to join him and Azalea as they still have one spot, much to the dismay of the unconquered pink tree. Initially, Azalea was vehemently opposed to the idea, but she's a simp for Jung and she's also under the control of the Oracle, so she wasn't able to block our boy from joining. Nonetheless, with the three now forming a group, the instructor hands out three cards allowing the three to find each other if they ever get lost in the dungeon. And the way it works is pretty easy, all you have to do is rip the card in half and your group members will get notified of your location. But it's a one-time use only. Mere moments later, all students were given the chance to pick between a real sword or staff to equip themselves with, so their group ended up with two swordsmen in Jung and Lee and one sorceress in the form of Azalea. Then with a single blink, the three found themselves teleported to a brand new world where Azalea had to hold onto her dear life to make sure her skirt didn't get removed by the mysterious portal. Upon landing within the brand new world, our boy coincidentally lands underneath Azalea, allowing for Lee to be able to stare right into the unprotected region Azalea uses whenever she heads to the bathroom. However, just as Azalea was about to teach Lee a lesson to never join the dark, sussy side of the Fire Nation, all three get interrupted by a fierce growl from behind. It was at this very moment our boy knew he screwed up as he let his guard down in exchange for his banana tree to be branded Mr. Peeping Tom. But upon closer inspection, Lee realizes the intense growl he heard from behind came from a cute little wolf, causing him to be utterly confused. Eventually, our boy realized that it's still a training exercise, so this must be the reason why they look super cute, allowing Lee to muster up some courage to fight back at the monsters surrounding his group. Unfortunately for Lee though, he tries to stomp his way through the opponent, but he gets sent flying back as it turns out the cute little pup had a secret smurf hiding within it. Nevertheless, Azalea comes to his rescue, which she gets annoyed when Lee accidentally smashes right into her fresh glazed buns, causing her to think Bro really is a supreme sussy baka. But with no time to waste, Azalea doesn't send our boy to the sussy dimension instead, she began summoning her powers as Azalea is still part of the royal tree line. A few seconds later, it's finally revealed that Azalea has the powers of an elementalist, allowing her to conjure up spirits including birds, while also having the ability to control the elements. Thus, she starts destroying every monster in front of their group like a true powerful wizard, leaving Jung and Lee to witness her true power, but somehow, Azalea's balloons grew larger as well. Not wanting to be solely outdone by his peers, our boy joined in as well, so Lee began to channel his inner Kirito powers as he wants to make his sword art online idol proud with his swordsmanship. With a much improved Lee in action, Azalea finishes destroying the monsters on her side, but she started to watch Lee in awe as Bro can actually hold his ground now, leaving her to think Lee definitely improved. While watching, Azalea begins to get flustered as she starts to gush about the fact that Lee might actually be able to help her out, so it looks like the pink tree might want to join Lee's tree decks sometime soon. Regardless, as Azalea continues to think about what the Oracle has told her a week ago, she loses her focus allowing the monster to gank her from behind. However, our boy is able to save her in the nick of time, but let's just say Lee took every advantage of being able to hold Azalea in more ways than one. Eventually, with Azalea still stunned at the fact that she just got saved by Loli Lee, she finally realizes that Bro is straight up squeezing some pink rice cakes. As such, Azalea transforms into the Red Nation as she can't believe Lee had the gall to do such a thing. 
So she starts yelling at him to let go and threatens Lee she's about to make sure he becomes one armed man instead. And so our boy finally lets go of his target. But he starts making an excuse that it was all the fault of aim assist as he's on controller right now. Regardless with everyone now safe again, Azalea gets back up on her feet where she actually takes the time to thank Lee, but she asks our boy why he even helped her. But the first thing out of Lee's mouth is true to his core, so he replies by truthfully claiming it's because he thinks she's pretty. Lee then panics after he uttered the words pretty, as he didn't expect to randomly blurt out what he was thinking in his head. He then tries to take back what he said, but Azalea says nothing while she grips her staff hard, so we already know girl is falling in love with his accidental riz. Eventually, Azalea snaps back to reality looking like she's absolutely frustrated with him. But she just mumbles, oh sure, and continues on her way while Lee continues to think he's totally screwed. As such, our boy decides to leave her vicinity as he wants no beef with the pink tree unlike the liver king. But he picks up her card and decides to keep it to commemorate become 18. Meanwhile, with Lee having his back turned on Azalea, she begins to show her true colors by hitting herself as she can't help herself but smile and get flustered with Lee around. And now the trap is set for Azalea's heart, and all our boy had to do was unleash his truthful riz thanks to his behemoth down under making sure he doesn't think too hard. With the dungeon raid now over, we fast forward to later on the day where Lee runs into both Jung and Azalea on their breaks, so he ends up joining them. Upon sitting down to join in on their conversation, Lee learns how Jung became a husband candidate to the World Tree as Jung claims that one day randomly, a hologram appeared and told him to become a husband. Azalea then continued to pester Jung more information about the World Tree, causing him to make an excuse to disappear for a moment, leaving Mr. Tree Catcher alone with the pink one. Unfortunately for our boy, Azalea attempts to ignore him, so Lee is forced to make some awkward small talk due to him still needing two more friends to make sure he doesn't fail his main quest. Regrettably, all his attempts to make Azalea more friendly fail, as she just replies with yes or no questions, giving him bad flashbacks to when boys try to talk to their uninterested crush. But Lee is a smart man, so he ends up changing topics to Jung as he knows Azalea is still simping for him. So Lee brings up the fact that Jung loves pine drinks. Success, it works, but this time Azalea only replies with two words instead, so he decides to leave when Jung came back later. And as Lee walks back home to his dorm, he checks on his quest progress and finds that he's continued rising up Jung's favorability level. But then, upon closer look, our boy realizes that Azalea's favorability level went up as well, but he gets confused as every time he runs into her, she keeps giving him the meanest of looks so it doesn't even make sense. As such, Bro decides he's just going to be a hopeless romantic as he can never understand a woman's true feelings, other than when he starts ramming like Bangarang. Suddenly, as Lee contemplates life in this brand new world, he gets ganked by Gusiel. But this time her appearance is totally off, as she actually looks like a different person that Lee would totally love to put into his tree decks. Luckily for him, Gusiel asks if she can tag along back to their dorms, so Lee accepts as he knows Gusiel is on good terms with Azalea, so she might be his way in. And as the two walk home together, Gusiel randomly activates some sussy nation powers in public by whipping out some chocolate and asking if our boy would like some, but she places it right on top of some watermelons where the chocolates spell out huge. Now this is the part that confirmed my suspicions of Gusiel being the most sussy one of them all, as she gives him the chocolate E, but it was all a trap as the chocolates now spell out hug, so she tries to gank him with one. But right before our boy felt the relief of Gusiel's pillows, she laughs it off and claims it was all just a joke, leaving Lee a bit disappointed as he can't believe his heart was racing. Nevertheless, Lee shrugs it all off like nothing ever happened and continued heading home towards their dorm with Gusiel still hanging around. Eventually, it finally dawns on Lee that Gusiel totally could be his friend, so he stops and asks her if she considers him as one. Of course, she happily replies by claiming the fact that she considered him as her first friend she made upon arriving at the academy, so she thought it was absolutely clear they were close. Now with the obvious revelation that Yusul thinks of him as a friend, Lee bids goodbye to her as they arrive on campus where it's Lee breathes a sigh of relief as he only needs one other friend now to complete the quest. As such, he decides to take a peek at his quest progress menu once again, only for him to be confused as Yusul has not appeared on his list, so our boy just assumes it's a bug. However, as the honeysuckle tree continues walking away, she looks back by subtly peeking around her shoulder and laughs at Lee, totally looking super sus as if she's up to no good. Fast forward the next day back at school, Lee heads to his locker to grab some books, but then he got a genius idea after staring into Azalea's locker. Lee then remembered what Gusul said about Azalea loving chocolates, so he decided to place some chocolates in her locker and hid in a corner until she arrived. Jung then starts teasing her about the fact that some guy must be in love with her, but Azalea attempts her hardest to now show some affection. 
as she can't figure out who must be the culprit. Mere seconds later, our boy decides to gank her from behind by saying good morning, causing Azalea to freak out as she's slowly piecing two and two together, hoping profusely that the chocolates weren't from Lee. Now totally flustered, she's forced to turn around where she asks for the soft tone if Lee's the one that placed chocolates in her locker, but Lee just denies it all. Bro then walks away in absolute bliss, totally happy about his actions, so he starts repeating to himself why every woman fall in love with him. Mission success as Lee is unknowingly sliding deeper and deeper into her heart, and soon he will be super deep into the pink, never discovered before tree roots of Azalea. Regardless, as she freaks out on how to handle her emotions, Joan ganks her from behind and starts teasing her about how Lee must really like her, but she just denies it and vehemently opposes the idea. Unfortunately for her though, as she continues to deny everything, rumors start to spread that someone out there must really like her, but who can really blame them? With her now being the center of attention before class starts, she ends up having a flashback to the time Lee risked his life to save her and her giant pristine personalities. Nonetheless, after snapping back to reality, we discover that our boy is totally in now with Azalea since she begins to uncontrollably blush, looking like she's about to rip out a loud ooh-woo. Luckily, she's able to hold in the urge to be an e-girl, so she tries her hardest to figure what to do, but a random classmate comes up to her and saves her from going crazy. To Azalea's surprise, it's Sussy Yusu who came to her rescue, only for her to be disappointed after figuring out that she's the reason Lee has been giving her the perfect gifts. However, we also discover that Gusil's big mouth is not just good for one thing, but it's also great for hyping up Lee as she tries her hardest to be a best wing man. And so Gusil's attempts in helping our boy get his jumbo hot dog straight inside Azalea's wormhole seem to actually work, as she keeps having flashbacks to all the great things Chad Lee has done for her up to this point. Regardless of her feelings though, she looks back at the second gift of chocolates, looking like she's about to regret her future actions but remembers one crucial thing still at the back of her mind. The whole reason she's here is because she's still on a mission sent by a mysterious bearded man with an ominous scarlet necklace, who's now commanded her to bring Lee with her. After remembering her true mission, she readies her plump homemade sesame seed buns and proceeds to gank Lee where she asks our boy if he has time for the both of them to talk privately. Of course, Lee is quick to agree since Bro still needs friends for his quest to avoid getting a visit from the Grim Reaper. Nevertheless, Lee freaks out as Azalea decides to confront him for not making it clear that the gifts came from him, so he starts thinking about alternative ways to gain more friendship points. Luckily for him though, it looks like he skipped the entire friend zone straight into the Chad zone as Azalea sounds like she's beginning to be a simp for him, instead as she has absolutely mistaken his intentions. A few seconds later, and for the first time ever, Azalea actually looks Lee straight into his eyes and flashes a smile, making him wonder if he's finally able to finish the quest. However, things take a non-sussy turn straight into the rejection touchdown as Azalea ends up standing up to tell him straight up to stop giving her so much attention. She continued on claiming that she's totally aware that the reason he's doing all of this is because he wants to go ratata on her Pikachu, and she knows he probably wants to do his signature move of thunderbolting inside of her heartwood. Lee then tries to explain himself but fails to do so as Azalea continues on and ends up telling a sob story of her past. Long story short, all her life people wanted something from her, but every time they got what they wanted, they just left her behind and acted like they didn't know her. As such, she's afraid of getting close with our boy, so she proceeds to hand back his chocolates and tells him to please stop trying as she's had enough. Suddenly, as Azalea begins to walk away, Lee gets her attention back and begins to apologize while letting her know his true intentions of just merely wanting to be her friend. He continues on by softly saying that he's not here trying to be a sussy master or to use her royal blood since he simply just wants to befriend her with no strings attached. So now we have to add some dramatic effect so a flustered Azalea looks away from his gaze and questions why Bro would even want to be her friend. Without any hesitation, these Wizard of Oz powers activate so he just blurts out saying it's because she's prettier than Olivia Rodrigo. And just like that, our boy recaptured the heart of Pinky, without even trying, since all he really wanted to do is be her friend and also pass the quests since time is running out. Nevertheless, with Lee's handout hoping to see if Azalea would accept his second attempt to becoming friends with her, Azalea decides to accept this time. However, right before she could complete the wholesome handshake, the two get interrupted by an ominous booming voice from behind causing Azalea's seasonal watermelons to instantly turn around. The man behind the dark ominous voice is revealed to be Azalea's father, donning the rich sugar daddy attire looking like he's ready to pay off an Instagram model for a quick night out if you know what I mean. Nonetheless, with her father now entering the fray unexpectedly, our boy has no idea what to do as he can feel Azalea's aura totally tense up as if she knows her jungler is about to feed her lane. Still, with her anger visibly turning up a level by the second, her father pays no attention to her bar as he continues asking if he can sneak a moment to talk privately. 
Regardless, her fumes maxes out, yet Azalea refuses to make a single sound. Instead, she looks like she just transformed into Vegeta after exiting the time chamber. Unfortunately, she didn't pop off like Pop Smoke, so she just stands there toothless while he gives a card to our boy, where we find out the father's name is Sumhan. Boss music then begins to play while Lee is baffled that Sumhan and Azalea have different last names, so Sungan ends up telling her boy to meet up tomorrow since he's busy today. After sending out his invite, Sunghan goes to forcefully grab his daughter's hand while saying out loud that it's time to have some fun father-daughter time for lunch. However, she deflects his hand absolutely disgusted at what she's seeing, trying her best impression to be like M. Bede avoiding a Serbian man from the Nuggets. Her hostility towards her own father is met with the old man just laughing and going ho 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 like Santa, acting like she's just playing around so he ends up deciding to leave her alone with our boy. With Sungin gone, Azalea tells Lee that whatever he's going to tell him is probably going to be super beneficial to him, but Lee asks if it's going to be the same way for her too. Unfortunately, Bro figures out that it won't be good for her at all so he gives concern for her which only gets her angry. Eventually, Azalea fully breaks down when our boy tells her that he truly cares for her as a friend, so he wants to know what the heck is going on to make her act this way. But before she could explain, the lights turn off while she walks away from Lee where she decides to just leave him hanging without all her baggage. Moments later and with Azala nowhere to be seen, his future wife ganks in with a notification asking if he would like to butt into another family's business. Without any hesitation, he calls her stupid since he's almost maxed out her favorability level and says of course he's going to go meddle with another family like he's Malcolm in the middle to finish his quest. So now Lee is fully determined in digging up some tea on the mysterious Sunhan from the noble branch as he's ready to risk it all for Azalea since his life is on the line no matter what. As our boy furiously brainstorms with some anime main character energy ways to help out Azalea, the World Tree pops out advising him to ask an adult. It was at this very moment the Sussy Nation attacked as the World Tree is urging him to ask Seung for some help, and we'd all know what that will lead to. Fast forward back to the academy, our boy gets impatient waiting outside Seung's room so he barges in, only for her to outright ignore him as if she's too busy subscribing to our channel. After hitting the like button, Siang gets snuck up on as she's blasting a sussy video in full volume, so she can't hear anything other than some guy going full smash bros on his partner. Eventually, Lee taps her shoulder after Siang has gone full on sussy mode since she began to play with her Starbucks vanilla bean frap extra whip non-stop. Regardless, after being caught in plain sight, Siang quickly pauses the video to start yelling at our boy to knock, but she's a wild one since she doesn't change tabs. Nonetheless, while looking both embarrassed and slightly annoyed at the same time, Siang puts a lid on her vanilla bean to order Lee to get to the point as he can clearly see she's currently preoccupied. Anyways, with a massive 30-inch screen behind Siang showing off a 12-inch Subway chicken being drilled into a toasted herbs and cheese footlong, Lee asks if she knows anything about Sungin. But before she could reveal any information, Siang scolds him looking like an angry ex-girlfriend for getting close to treat people as it makes things complicated. Nevertheless, she bargains with Luck God 9000 to do exactly what's happening on her screen if he hopes to have any chance of her revealing such sensitive and secret information. So without missing a beat, Bro takes a single step to fully unload some accidental Rizmaster 9000 skills at Siang, causing her twin pyramids of Giza to perk up more than a cat on top of their climbing poles. Mere seconds later, the two transform into an F1 race as our boy slid straight into the number one pole position while Miss Professor got ready to learn about black holes. By the way, in quantum anime theory, all holes must be filled to help clear and better define the plot so like a good scientist, Lee made sure Seung understood what happens when an unstoppable force meets a wet object. Regardless, fast forward an hour of very intense Smash Bros Ultimate 1 vs. 1's on Final Destination, Lee came out absolutely victorious with Seung left mind blown in more ways than one. After crossing the finish line and zipping up his race car, he drops the bomb on Seung letting her know that he's actually a husband candidate for the world tree. But Seung can't believe what she just heard. So to appease her curiosity, Bro whips out the store function of the candidate system to buy an arboreal ball, causing Seung to be stunned beyond belief as he hands her a prize. At this point, Seung basically goes into shock as if I since I still can't believe that the world tree is totally okay with Bro handing out his banana tree left and right. Regardless, a deal is a deal, so Siang whips out the backstory on Azalea's family where it's revealed that Sumhan is actually her stepfather and not some weirdo stepbrother. Anyways, long story short, her mom was basically a powerful goddess, but her true biological dad was just a normal human. Unfortunately though, something happened out of nowhere to cause the mom to suddenly fall in love with Sumhan. And to this day, no one knows what truly happened as her true dad disappeared from the world. Now that Siang fulfilled the end of her bargain, 
Our boy pops his mask back on and goes on his way looking like he's ready to get to the bottom of this mystery, even if tremendous danger awaits. However, right before Lee is able to fully exit the room, Siang stops him in his tracks to ask a very great question that most logical people would have. So she asks why would he clap other trees if he's a husband candidate? Nonetheless, without any ounce of hesitation, Lee turns around and informs her that he absolutely despises the world tree, so that's his reason. Suddenly, as he finishes his sentence, Lee bumps into a mysterious bombshell with the largest ever traffic cones to date, and the dump truck on her could easily cause tsunamis from a single ripple. With Lee now left speechless, he pauses in the middle of the hallway as too much blood is rushing towards his banana tree since he can't shake the image of the goddess off his head. Luckily for our boy though, he gets brought back to reality after Sue ganks him out of nowhere, where she's wanting to know why bro hasn't kept his promise of showing up to training. And speaking of large, she ends up whipping her twin blue eyes white dragons into frame, pushing her giant sussy clouds straight into Lee whilst whispering that she was waiting for him. But instead of taking her sussy hint of wanting him to unleash his own dragon powers on her, Ro jumps back and quickly starts firing off excuses for being tardy. Eventually, Lee slips up and accidentally lets it rip by saying that he would do anything to make it up to her, so she starts perking up more than her twin pyramids of Giza upon hearing him say the magic word. After witnessing Suyu's entire facial expression quickly change, Bro realized he screwed up since Suyu is also part of the royal tree family, meaning she can make him literally do anything. Luckily for him though, Sue catches him and myself totally by surprise when she finally speaks up, mentioning how she just wants to become friends with him and that will be enough for the two to make it even. A few seconds then pass by with Lee just staring at her in total confusion, so Suyu lets him know that it's really her assistant's idea since she always pesters her to make friends. Regardless, the two decide to begin from scratch after becoming friends, where it's revealed that Sue doesn't even remember his name. So Lee desperately attempts to get her to memorize his name to no avail. But it's okay though since Lee can use a special battering ram to make sure she really remembers next time. Anyways, after Sue got just his first name right for the first time ever, Bro got so excited that he instinctively reached out and held her hand to hype her up like a true friend. However, no one has ever held her hand before as no normie dared to even get physically close with someone from the royal tree family, so she starts glowing like never before. After holding hands for a few more seconds, the aloof Suyu pulls away as she starts feeling something weird tingling in her heart, but Lee tells her it's totally normal. With Lee reassuring her that all her new feelings she's discovering is totally normal, she ends up ordering our boy to show up every morning since she wants to do it with him. Now clearly these two are having some kind of misunderstanding as Lee has no idea by what she just meant about wanting to do whatever with him, but he doesn't mind and happily waves goodbye knowing he's one step closer to finishing his quest. Elsewhere, the mysterious dump truck of a goddess more endowed than Harvard University has ganked Siam, alerting her that she's only dropping by since her mission is nearby but she wants to know if there's anyone at the academy that could be of use to her. She then leaves with her assets clapping together like drums of war in a full-on sussy body suit after hearing Siam say that she will let her know as soon as possible if she ever finds anybody suitable. Fast forward the next morning, we discover that Lee has decided to meet up with Azalea's step Zaddy, but the first thing he does is urge Lee to hop into his car to change their scenery. Now me personally, I ain't stepping into some random step Zaddy's car that I have never ever met before, but our boy is totally built different, so he agrees. Cue some ominous music as Mr. Sungin quickly cuts to the chase and tells Lee that tree people and humans are both just living beings in the end, so there's no need to treat them differently. Sungan then redirects their conversation towards the world tree, asking questions over and over again about how much Lee knows about the world tree. However, Lee decides to honestly answer all these questions to the best of his abilities without giving away too much, but Lee ends the entire job like interview by mentioning that he absolutely despises the world tree. And just like that, Sungan begins to show his true colors after thinking he's found a new ally but jokes on him, Lee only meant that he loves to hate smash world trees. Regardless, shortly after finding something the two have in common, Sungin's car abruptly drifts into a hidden alley, where Lee gets out looking like he's thinking about how he's seen this in so many anime scenes, but usually it ends up really bad for the first one out. But Bro is on full chill mode, so he just goes along with everything and proceeds to follow the sussy boss man straight into a super dark building with no lights on, so hopefully Lee isn't about to be part of a brand new Netflix documentary featuring his disappearance. Mere seconds later, hooded men in full black outfits start passing by, but luckily nothing happens, as they pay him no attention. Eventually, Lee finds himself sitting in front of Sunghan, who's busy apologizing about his shabby makeshift office, but it has to make do for now, so he drops the bomb and reveals the fact that an oracle has arrived. 
sung then happily mentions that the Oracle apparently wants him to bring Lee to her, which ends up confusing our boy as he doesn't really know what or who the Oracle is. After a quick moment of silence as Lee attempts to figure out what the heck is going on, Sunken grins like that one sussy friend that your uncle brought to meet you saying that you'll understand soon enough. The lights then start to flicker and dim, making Lee scramble to contact the World Tree only to find out his access is restricted here, so he's forced to sit while stuck watching Summon's face disappear so he asks Lee to join them. But the crazy boss man gets up from his couch looking like his willy is getting one cut, totally ecstatic that he might be able to convince a World Tree husband candidate to join forces with him. To make his offer more enticing, Sunken decides to unlock a nearby locked chest, telling Lee that he can have anything he wants in the world, money, power, and even his daughter Azalea if he wishes. Upon hearing Sungin mention Azalea, Bro gets up totally pumped but I can't tell if he's super happy or angry since his Italian salami is already enlarging. Turns out, I wasn't the only one that was confused since Sungin ends up taking his reaction as a positive note so Sungin explains that this small ball is the key to taking over a tree person. The evil man clarifies that this single item can make a tree person, including Azalea, uncontrollably want them and to basically fall heads over heels for them forever. However, even with his thoughts getting invaded by the entire sussy fire nation from all directions, he snaps out of it and bluntly asks Sunghan if he did the same to Azalea's mom, to which he admits. Nevertheless, Sunghan apparently can't properly read the room as Lee now looks like he's about to unleash his Rock Lee's final eight gate, so he ends up mentioning how he shouldn't worry about Azalea, as her tree has never been deflowered by another person before. The madman even brings up how he baited Azalea to fully trust him and proceeds to make fun of her, making Lee even more furious as his power level begins to skyrocket past 9000. Nevertheless, Sungin continues on his mission to recruit Lee while absolutely missing all the negative signals our bro is giving off, so he still decides to finally stretch out his hand to seal the deal. We then time skip 69 minutes later, where we discover that Rock Lee lost to the pervy sage since Lee shook Sungin's hand and accepted the deal to join his sussy gang. Upon accepting the initiation to join Delta Gamma Sussy, Sunghin is overly thrilled, so he ends up revealing to Lee that he's planning to attack the Academy in exactly two days. This is going to be his first part of the plan to ultimately wage war against the World Tree, so he can put an end to all tree people, so he summons a Dark Magician to help prop his plan. The Dark Magician then ganks the two out of nowhere, bringing along a mysterious ball and a golden sword as a gift for Lee. With Magical Ball and the Golden Short Sword now in hand, Sunghan prepares Lee for his first ever mission, to which he must use the Magical Ball as it will allow him to teleport Azalea to where the Holder is. Luckily for Lee though he doesn't have to do it now so a gleeful Sunghan allows him to go on about his business today, so our bro leaves the sussy basement to think, allowing him to decide that he's just going to fake being his ally for now. However, Lee is having an internal crisis as he's having a hard time resisting the urge to actually join up with Sunghan, so he could make Azalea his personal milk pumper. But after hiding in a corner and taking a quick sussy break by himself, he pulls off a big brain move with exploding his milk machine, allowing him to reach a sage-like clarity that he uses to stay loyal to the world tree. Shortly after ascending into a godlike mode of clarity, Lee quickly rushes to meet up with Seung to inform of her of everything that happened. Unfortunately for Lee though, Seung gets furious after learning that Lee is planning to deal with the bad guys himself, so she scolds him and urges him to not come to the academy that day. But Lee is too stubborn to listen, so Seung instantly bursts into her Gear 5 mode, yelling at Lee that he can actually perish during that day like my weak old banana bread since he's still new to this world. Regardless, Lee is determined to help fight off the intruders, so Seung activates her Gear 5 Shadow Fiend techniques to give a taste of this new of real true power within this world. Much to Seung's surprise though, Lee is able to dodge a couple of her normal attacks with ease, making our bro look like a true fighter. However, Seung starts to laugh maniacally as she ramps up her attack speed by the second, so she mocks him by saying that he better be ready for the role swap if he loses this duel since she will be the one that's going to be assaulting his banana hole later. After toying enough times with Lee, Seung decides it's time for her to start unleashing some real attacks if she targets our boy and whips out some sick airbending skills. With wind magic now in play during your duel, Lee is unable to dodge, so he gets sent flying back to ground zero, with just one single hit from Seung who looks like she's busy cosplaying Cloud from Final Fantasy. Bro then passes out from the direct hit, so Seung swaps back to her normal form to watch over and take care of him as he catches some well-needed Zs. Of course, after waking up, the first words out of his mouth is him asking when she's planning to destroy him with her sussy tree roots, since she promised to do so if he lost. Luckily for him though, Seung backtracks, since she isn't really into cosplaying a purple octopus that fills all the open holes they can find, so she would rather have him to go back to the usual forceful play of golf in all 18 of her holes. 
Fast forward to the next day, Bro decides to double dip on some tree action so he shows up to training with Suyu for the first time in ages after realizing he's pretty powerless. After a very effective training lesson, Suyu compliments our boy for being much improved compared to the first time they met, giving Lee confidence and asking her out to which Suyu happily accepts. Unfortunately for her, he didn't realize that him asking her out meant they were just going to grab some good old Korean chicken and beer, since she totally thought Bro meant something else super sussy. Regardless, since she's from a super rich and powerful family, Lee discovers that this girl doesn't even know how to eat chicken, but she ends up devouring everything on the table whilst looking like she's in love. Suri with a deadpan face then mentions that although all the food tastes quite different compared to the ones she usually has at home, she doesn't mind it too much since she's spending time with our boy. Regardless, Lee misses all the hints from Suyu again that she clearly wants his cannon to directly hit the hull of her ship, so he instead takes the opportunity to ask her for a favor. The two leave the restaurant upon Suyu agreeing to help him with his mysterious favor, and the only thing that's been revealed so far is that this favor will put her in danger to which she doesn't really mind. Nonetheless, before the two wave their goodbyes for the night, Suyu advises him to warn Azalea in advance but Lee hasn't had the courage yet to fill her in. As such, night falls upon the city where Lee is unable to sleep as the day of reckoning has come knocking on his door. In the morning, Lee visits Seom's office to get one last pump going before he might actually perish in this world, but it's too late since Seom has to attend the fated assembly. Nevertheless, with Lee on his mission to save the world, Seom parts him with one last gift, but it's not her phone number, instead it's someone else's that can play hero if anything goes haywire like in Helldivers 2. So without being able to unleash his hidden jutsu powers hiding behind his pants, he leaves the room, but Seon gets worried as she doesn't want him to blow up like my toilet. Regardless, Lee tells her not to worry as he's been practicing a lot of one versus ones on Brawlhalla, so he's for sure coming back alive. Fast forward to inside the assembly, the Final Fantasy Reckoning has started causing students to wonder what the heck is going on as random loud noises kept popping out left and right like my popping swing. Eventually, everyone gets super worried including Azalea. So Lee calls up the random number only to find out that it's a girl, and they are already too busy fighting off the invader Zims. So with no one else to rely on, he realizes he's the only one to lock in duelists, so it's up to him now to protect this side. At the same time, reality is setting in more quickly for Azalea, as she knows that this is all part of Sungin's plan, unable to believe he's actually going through with it. Mere seconds later, one of the normie teachers, with no powers, comes bursting through the main doors, yelling at all the students to evacuate as the situation outside has become dire, just like when I hit up Taco Bell at lunch. As such, all the students began running out like a bunch of headless chickens, looking like each one just heard that there's a free unlimited food buffet next door. However, Azalea refuses to budge from her seat since she wants to clap them herself, so Lee shows up. But all she does is activate her angry bird's face since she thought he joined hands with the Sith. Now, unable to fathom that Lee would actually go toe to toe against Sunghen, she begins crying as she thinks Bro is pulling a double agent move so he can secretly capture her, all according to Sungin's plan. Nevertheless, time is running out as the same teacher that tried to get them to leave ends up getting ganked by a couple men looking like they're cosplaying Jawas from The Mandalorian. With the teacher now easily dispatched of, we discover that outside their classroom, more hooded people have begun springing up like a bunch of bunnies reproducing, so it's all chaos outside with sirens blaring over level 9000. At the same time, other normie teachers looking exactly like the other one, try their best to stop the invaders but without any tree powers, they are basically no match. Back inside the classroom of Lee, the masked men approach our boy but they call him Apostle Lee and inform him that he can now proceed to a safe place they procured and asks if he still has the crystal ball given to him the other day. Now speaking of balls, Bro whips it out like a dragon ball ready to summon the dragon Shenron to show the sussy bakers, but we all know he's got a different hidden dragon if you know what I mean. Anyways, upon hearing the entire conversation unfold and seeing that Lee actually kept the Dragon Ball Z, Azalea has now sunk into a deep sadness, busy thinking that Lee actually betrayed her by joining the evil side. However, it was at this very moment our Chad has turned the sussy turntables on the mysterious dudes as he tells them he don't want to be a sneako so he ain't down. Shortly after, whilst Azalea looks like she just got spoiled by the ending of Demon Slayer, he says the magic word allowing Jung and Su to come flying out of nowhere straight at the unsuspecting midgets. The Jawas are quickly taken care of as they are no match against Su's and Jung's surprise jungle ganks with full on red buff, easily destroying all of them but one. The one left standing trembles then flees while yelling at Lee that he's a bigger traitor than my boy Itachi from Naruto, unable to believe one would not want unlimited tree rice cake smashing. 
Regardless, now that the coast is clear around the Three Musketeers plus Pink Girl Azalea, she starts looking like she's fallen more in love with our boy as she thought Lee became one of the bad guys the entire time. As such, she swoons even more upon learning that Lee created the Avengers just to protect her, so in the end she starts crying as no guy ever showed her this much kindness. Nevertheless, Sue tries her best to comfort her but Sue already forgot her name already, so she calls her Pinky and urges her to move the bad guys will hear about Lee's betrayal very soon. As such, Chad Jung takes one for the team allowing Lee to go with the girls to start escaping the academy, while he himself has to go protect the teacher that got ganked from earlier. As they all continue running and with Azalea being dragged by Lee, she continues to shed tears as she can't fathom how she treated our boy so badly the entire time and it turns out, he's actually the best guy around. Unfortunately for the Chad and his simps, upon turning the corner, a bunch of Jawas notices them and begins chasing them, outnumbering them 69 to 1. Bro then realizes he's in a pickle, and he absolutely hates pickles on his burgers so he's a weirdo but he knows he needs a miracle to get out of this one. However, Lee forgot that he has Miss Largest Double Twin Dragons still on his side. So just with her skills and her double watermelons alone, she can easily defeat the enemy. She then walks forward like an absolute brave Stacy, with every step of hers causing earthquakes to rumble all around due to how large and huge her combo meals are whilst telling Lee to stick to their Avengers plan. So with Sue deciding to take all of the invaders on by herself and urging the two to keep running, Azalea looks behind her as they run, unable to believe her eyes that so many people are here for her. Nonetheless, the cult of Sunghan has had enough of the soap opera unfolding before them, so all of them rushes the blonde mistress at once, but Sue stands her ground while also looking like she's super bored. But as a dozen members get close to Sue ready to dismantle her one by one, a bright flash quickly engulfs them and it wasn't a flash bang, instead it's Sue's blistering speed destroying them all. I'm surprised she can even move this fast with those Honkai impacts on her, because I know I wouldn't be able to move that fast with those personalities holding me down. Nevertheless, two seconds later, she continues with her blade dance, allowing her to mow the wall with two other dozen attackers, and each one quickly fell as fast as the other, but at least they got to witness some double dragons in action. After utterly destroying the enemy with ease and with no one left standing other than her, she pauses for one second to think about Korean fried chicken and drinks like a savage. She then quickly whips out a gift she was hiding in between her twin pyramids of Giza, making sure it's still perfectly fine as she was worried for a second that she might have went too hard like I show speed. Elsewhere, it's revealed that both Lee and Azalea has almost made it out to the back door of the academy, and all they have to do is to get to the end of the hallway and turn right. However, right before they are able to make it out to the intersection, boss music begins to play accompanied by a booming voice calling for Lee, saying that he's betrayed us brother. And so the man behind the eerie voice pops out at the end of the corridor, showing himself to be a true supervillain as outright darkness engulfs him more than darkness from Konosuba. Sungan's appearance alone quickly causes Azalea to turn pale like mango juice, striking both fear and anger deep within Azalea's heart, while her eyes refuses to look away. Nonetheless, Sungan continues on and blocks the path in between the exit and the two, busy being outright angry that Lee took the path of betrayal, when he could have had anything he wanted if he just became a good boy and followed the plan. Mere seconds later, Lee and Azalea get sandwiched from behind like pulled pork as an army of members appears behind them, so Sungan tells Lee that he's giving him one last chance to join their side. However, instead of falling for Sungan's futile antics, he decides to grip Azalea's hands even harder and proceeds to shout back to Sunghan that he's never going to join his side unless his hero, Ash Ketchum, joins since he wants to catch them all. And just like that, Sungan instantaneously implodes so he causes a dark ray to engulf the sky, causing more darkness to surround him, so he tells Lee that he can also just brainwash them if need be. At the same time, Sungan gives the signal for the boys to attack, as now he knows he needs to be forceful if he wants to win the Avatar War against the World Tree. However, after binge watching the new Avatar The Last Airbender show on Netflix, Azalea realizes that she too can call upon her airbending powers so this time she can be the one to step up to save Lee. And so Azalea starts sending out aggressive air warbirds, while following it up with a combo of air magic to stop the oncoming Jawas from reaching Lee, catching everyone by total surprise as no one thought she had it in within her. Nevertheless, she continues to power up like she just came out of the time chamber with a power level over 9000, causing total destruction upon those currently trying to oppose her and Lee. Unfortunately for the two though, Azalea went too ham with her domain expansion powers after watching too much Jujutsu Kaisen, so she quickly overexerts herself causing her to instantly run out of juice. With Lee now distracted by Azalea, due to her looking like she's about to pass out, Sunghan takes the prime opportunity to strike as he quickly teleports to try and deliver a single one-hit KO. 
Luckily, Lee is able to dodge the first hit, but Sum Han isn't showing any signs of stopping after the first warning strike. So Bro starts to look like he's about to turn into a wannabe Akaza, and so game on since Lee knows he needs to make his final stand now or else face utter destruction in this world, and there's no way he's giving up his rice cake smashing time with trees. Lee then tries his best to initiate an attack on his own, but some hand easily deflects Lee's attack like a Sigma male with one hand. So he begins to chuckle like a maniac. Sungen then decides he's had enough of toying around with weak boys like Lee, so he activates the true power of his sword, causing red magic to overflow within it, revealing an invisible blade. In an instant, Lee is sent flying like a hyena after Summon just pointed his sword at him. So maybe this is all just an elaborate magic trick from Disney to destroy weebs. Anyways, with Sumhan not even moving a single inch, our boy is left speechless on his knees as he can't even tell where the attacks are coming from since the bad dude is just standing there with his sword pointed at him. However, Sunghan approaches him slowly since he thinks Lee is about to give up due to his crack cosplaying a Magic the Gathering tournament behind him. But instead, Lee attacks one more time. Unfortunately for our boy, it wasn't enough so he gets sent flying like Teen Rocket once again, leaving him utterly defeated before Sunghan causing Azalea to wake up from her exhaustedness. So with Lee now on the ground and Sunghan looking like he's about to stick Excalibur straight into a block of weak stone under him, all Azalea can do is shout like a cheerleader and watch from afar. However, with Lee on the verge of destruction, he quickly gets up on one knee ready to accept his fate, all sending Azalea one last smile. No one he tried his best. Suddenly, right before Sunghan was about to deliver the finishing blow, pink energy began engulfing the entire area as Azalea looks like she's channeling her inner tree Victoria's secret to save the one man that taught her how to truly love. Within seconds, Azalea is able to quickly dispatch of every member near them while also informing Sunghan that she's about to turn him into orange pulp but Summon laughs and embraces the entire thing. It's then revealed that this is actually part of Summon's plan, as he needed Azalea to finally find her final evolution form just so he's able to fully harvest her and her powers using one simple marble trick. Now knowing what Summon is about to do, our boy pushes himself past his limit tests since he knows he needs to stop Summon or else all will be lost. As such, Bro musters up all the energy left in his tank so he can attempt a sneak attack from behind whilst also holding the secret Dragon Balls in his hand. Success, it works as he's able to actually close the gap between him and the evil Lord, allowing him to use the Dragon Ball Z to teleport both himself and Sunhan to their base so Azalea would not get caught in 4K. In an instant, the two disappear leaving Azalea all alone by herself, so she begins weeping on her knees after realizing what just happened, since she never wanted Bro to sacrifice himself. Unfortunately though, as she's stuck in her emotional state, one of the cult members from behind has started to make his way to deliver the final blow himself on the one target they needed to capture. With the cult member fast approaching, Azalea continues to cry while still totally unaware that she's about to get ganked and sent to the afterlife. She's too focused on grieving, knowing that such a chad sacrifice from Lee will only lead to him getting his own cheeks clapped since he doesn't have the power to stand up to Sunhan alone. And speak of the devil, Lee finds himself stuck with nowhere to run and he has Sungin right in front of him busy laughing at him calling Lee crazy for falling madly in love with his daughter. After finally mustering the energy to look up, Lee sees Sungin beside a mysterious tree, and when he tries to grip his Dragon Balls, Ro finds out it's a one-time use only. So without the Dragon Balls power to teleport out, Lee stands up with no other choice after realizing that the white tree beside Sungin has to be the world tree. However, upon hearing Lee call it the World Tree, Sunghan acts like an angry simp by yelling at Lee to watch his mouth claiming that his tree is nothing like the World Tree. It's then revealed that Sunghan has been worshipping another World Tree trying to take over this world, so his fate is worse than a Twitch Discord mod of a washed-up streamer. So not wanting to be out simped by an old man, Lee charges up some plot armor and proceeds to do a direct surprise attack. But Lee's surprise attack was too direct causing Sunghan to instantly counter with his signature invisible bloodbending attack while looking more fruity than usual with his stance. However, our boy is now able to see the invisible attacks thanks to Plot Armor Senpai. So Bro bursts through the clouds, acting like he's part of Cloud 9. As he continues perfectly dodging every attack, Lee is able to finally land his first close combat hit making Sungin begin to sweat. Mere seconds later, with the help of Kirito from Sword Art Online, Lee is able to actually damage Sungin, causing him to take a step back to reevaluate Lee's skills. Suddenly, Sungen activates the cheat console so he goes nuclear, like the Americans versus the Japs against Lee, so clearly there's no way Bro is able to survive this onslaught of magical power. 
Unfortunately for Sung In, he's no match against cultured plot armor as he discovers his ultimate point blank attack only caused a couple rips in Lee's shirt and bro is already on the counter like nothing ever happened. Lee then disappears into the fog of the aftermath, but things are about to get even more real since bro looks like he's about to pull an Itachi on Sung In's entire clan with one single eye. One eye blink later, Lee teleports right in front of Sung Han to deliver the final blow, but as he lands a critical hit, Sung In hits Lee with a smirk on his face right before falling to the ground. While confused about Sung Han smiling at him as he fell, Lee loses control of his body and hits the deck right beside Sung Han, not realizing he also got clapped by the old man. His life then flashes before him, but Lee doesn't regret being a sussy backa that made him enter this world, and since no one knows where this location is, Bro bids farewell while blaming his ranked teammates for being reincarnated into another world. Elsewhere outside, Azalea gets saved last second by Suyu, who utterly destroys the creeping acolyte, who was about to land a finishing blow. She then whips out her giant tropical watermelons in front of Azalea to remind her who's boss, then she orders Azalea to give as time is ticking and they need to move. But since Azalea is still stuck in her uncontrollable emotional simp state, Sue ends up deciding to hand over the chocolates she was saving to Azalea to help her calm down and to reach her senses. At the same time, a knockout Lee receives a notification warning him that he has exactly one minute left before he explodes for not completing the friendship quest, and the worst part is he just needs one to complete it. However, with only 30 seconds left to go before our boy fully perishes like spoiled milk, a blue face card slowly descends upon his body, the same one given to him a long time ago when Azalea was on his team for a mission. Back outside the special underground, Azalea starts weeping again after opening the box of chocolates, only to find out that it's actually from Lee asking her to please be his friend. Suddenly, after Azalea breaks down again, a massive pink light of magical power storms out of the box and straight into the sky engulfing the entire city. And now, after 10 attempts of getting Azalea to be his friend, Lee finally finishes the quest with 4 seconds to spare, but Bro is already past the gates of death, and it looks like there's no way to return. A flashback then occurs back to when Azalea was just little, right before her biological dad said he's just going to be gone for five days and when he finishes, he will run back as soon as possible. But as she goes to sleep in the flashback, her dad starts to transform into Lee. Luckily, Lee doesn't become her stepdad in the afterlife. Instead, Azalea's dad knew Sunghan was out to get him, so right before he departed for work, he left his remaining powers to Azalea in hopes that one day someone would protect her in his stead. His wish came true now that someone that eerily looked like his younger self came to save the day against Summon, only for the hero to find the same fate as her dad. Fast forward a couple days later, Azalea wakes up early in the morning to grab some water so she can go and scar the internet to find out what happened to Sunghan and Lee due to breaking news. After learning that Sunghan has been found with zero life force left, she happily learns that Lee was found with one HP left and is now in critical condition. So she hopes that Lee fully heals as fast as possible. Azalea can't help it but blame herself for what happened to the Academy and to everyone involved, especially our boy. Nonetheless, as she sulks around in her dorm room, she hears a knock on her door only to get ganked by Professor Seung, who's wanting to see if she's alright. After letting Seung in, she urges Azalea not to overdo anything for the next weeks and she went Super Saiyan during the fight against Sung Hen. And with her magical power totally depleted for now, she asks if Lee is doing okay and if he's going to make it, so Seung informs her that although his injuries are serious, Thanks to tree magic, he should fully recover within a week. After finishing debriefing Azalea of the aftermath, Siam ends up handing her a note from Lee whilst looking jealous that her rice cake partner wants a new tree added to his Pokéex. Nevertheless, Siam leaves the room allowing Azalea some privacy to read the note, and upon finishing reading it, Lee's friendship Riz is able to capture Azalea's heart again. Fast forward a couple days later, our boy is back at it again, and this time he's already itching to be a sussy backer, so Bro uses the smart TV to navigate straight to the culture hub with no care in the world. Unfortunately, right before Lee was able to explode his volcano after not being able to do so for almost two weeks, he gets interrupted by a couple people walking in during his special hour. After completing some routine checks, our boy is left alone, so he tries and goes for round two again. But this time, he gets annoying as he keeps getting notifications about the quest rewards he didn't get to accept yet. Since blood is super pressed and wanting to relieve his playground, he tries to push the notifications away only for the world tree to pop out and tease him for being such a sussy backa. To make matters worse for Lee, just when he got to the best part, Bro gets interrupted again with someone barging into his room, but this time it's a voice he's not familiar of. Unsure of who the heck the voice is coming from, he allows them in only for Lee to find out that a new girl has arrived in town, and this time she ain't got the extra large personalities like the other ones. Apparently they know each other, but Lee cannot for the life of his figure out who she is, 
so she ends up giving him a hint by pulling him super close to her face while looking like she's trying to raise him up. But much to her surprise, Bro still doesn't remember her, so she ends up pulling him even closer to whisper in his ear, asking if he's Seung's partner. Third time's the charm, so Lee finally remembers her as the girl that was supposed to be Seung's friend that was going to back him up if he called the special number, but she never did. Regardless, she ends up revealing to him that her real name is Beale, and she happens to be the vice chairman of the Hunter Association. And the only reason she's visiting is because she wants to know more about him after defeating Sungin. And thanks to the intel he's gathered, she informs him that the entire cult has been taken down. Buell also lets him know that she's super happy that Seung finally found a partner even after she ruthlessly turned down everyone, and she even went as far as to kneeling down before her to beg her to save Lee if anything happened during a fight. And if he has Seung's trust, then he has hers as well, so Buell finally acts serious again to ask him if he knows anything about the tree he found when he was busy fighting Summon. However, Bro doesn't really know anything more, so Beale reveals that Sumhan was part of a bigger group called Flower, whose sole purpose was to try and exterminate the World Tree. But with his help, the hunters were able to take down the subgroup Sumhan was part of, but right now things are in a pickle, because the World Tree is unable to use much of her power. So Bile is here today to ask Lee a favor if he's down to talk to the tree since the tree won't talk to her or anyone else. Initially, he declines, but upon learning that he's going to get paid 10 million if he just tries to talk to the tree, he instantly accepts the offer. 